Hey, it's Mike from Party of Four Crafts again. Today's video is going to be explaining to you what Kerf is. We won't talk in this video how to edit a file for Kerf. I'm just going to describe what Kerf is, why sometimes you add Kerf, sometimes you subtract Kerf, and why sometimes you add or subtract double the Kerf. And then in a future video, I'll explain how to actually do that in Inkscape. So this is a, a simulated file that you might have in Inkscape. It has a hole, and let's say there's a rod going through there, or there's a, a square for a peg to go through, or you have a tab that's going to fit into a slot. Each of these are areas that you might use Kerf. When two things are fitting together like this, or when you measure something and it has to fit tightly into something else, you have to worry about Kerf. So technically the definition of Kerf is it's the amount of material that the laser actually burns away. If you draw a perfectly one inch square in Inkscape and then run it through your laser and then measure the square that gets cut out, it will not be exactly one inch because the laser burns some of that square away. Every laser is a bit different. Every material is a bit different. You're gonna get bigger Kerf on quarter inch than you will on eighth inch. You get bigger kerf for woods that require higher laser power than you will with lower laser power. And comparing a Glowforge Pro to a Glowforge Plus or Basic, you'll get different kerf from those. So it's something you have to experiment. The easiest way is to draw a one inch square in Inkscape, cut it in your laser, and then measure it with calipers and see how big it is. In a second, we'll talk about why in that case, it'll be the difference that you'll measure is double the kerf. Uh, we'll talk about that right now. So in this example, I'm going to use the eraser in Photoshop to simulate the laser. When the laser cuts something, the beam has some actual thickness. So if the laser was cutting this square, like I just mentioned, it would go right along the center of the line and it would cut some material away and it just made that square, that rectangle bigger. And you can see it cut one kerf on this side, one kerf on this side, one kerf on this side, one kerf on this side. So the length and the width are each two kerf widths bigger than they were before. So if you did a one inch square and it came out, say, 1.2 inches, that would mean your kerf is 0.1 inches because it was a one inch square, 0.1 here, 0.1 here, made for 1.2 all the way across. With a circle, it's the same thing. The laser goes all the way around the circle and it cuts away material all the way around, hopefully straighter than that circle. And it cuts, if you're measuring anywhere you measure across, you're measuring the diameter of the original circle plus two curves. So a one inch circle, and let's say it's way too high. Let's say your curve was 0.1. This cut out circle uh, would actually that the hole left behind would be 1.2, whereas the cutout circle would be 0.8, because the circle, the hole that's left behind is bigger by two curves, but the circle that gets cut out is smaller by two curves. And that's why sometimes you add, sometimes you subtract, sometimes it's only one, sometimes it's two. We'll see an example of that now. So here's a tab that's fitting into a slot, like you use one of the box makers online to make a box and the tabs, you want them to fit tightly. But if you make them exactly the same size, like this is one inch wide, this is one inch wide, when the laser cuts this, it's going to cut this a bit smaller and it's going to cut this a bit bigger and now this is not going to fit well. So in order to do this, you need to make this one kerf bigger than it's supposed to be and make this one kerf smaller than it's supposed to be. And one kerf, because it cuts away one here, it cuts away one here, it cuts away one here. So I guess you could look at it as the width of this is changing by two kerfs, but the height is only changing by one kerf. And same here, this one needs to be made smaller by one, smaller by one for a total of two across and smaller by one here. So if you do that, once the laser is finished doing its job, then these will again fit tightly back together because they'll be the width that you wanted and after the kerf is cut away. 
So in that case, one kerf, one kerf, one kerf, for the size of a square or circle that you're cutting the inside out of, they're going to get bigger, so you want to make them smaller by two kerf settings. So I hope that helped you understand the idea behind kerf, and keep watching um, to see the, the next video that comes out that will talk about how to adjust a file for kerf. So if you want to see when that next video comes out, just click the subscribe button and I'll see you next time.